Quiet. It is Wednesday the 24th of May 2017. I'm just cruising down here at the back of Bonnet Bay. I'm on Tudor Road, or I'm on the footpath next to Tudor Road. And I want to go back to that spot that I found a couple of weeks ago. But this time I'm not going to walk up from the bottom of Warrenora. I'm going to actually just get there in the most sane manner. Well, that's the exit point that I came out last time. So that makes sense that this is the entrance point for this mission. There is probably a few different ways you can get in here. I just chose the way that I knew where I came out of last time. I want to go to the, one of those rocks that I was sitting on, on the, uh, was it Eagle Rock? Eagle Cliff? Eagle Ledge? I never even got the name of it, but it's not far from here. It's a beautiful place. Let's enjoy ourselves. Oh, there you go. It is called Eagle Rock. I will never call it Eagle Ledge or Eagle Edge again. All right, so this looks like where I'm going to park up this time. This rock ledge right here. Looks nice. Last time I was a little bit further up there, but I think this is me this time. I wanted to come down here to beautiful Bonnet Bay to do my response to Scooter Brad's sledging video of me. But before we get into that, it is NSD. NSD, this episode is Melbourne band Sleep Parade. And I don't know anything about this band at all, aside from the fact that they were the opening band for, it was either Floating Me or Cog. I'm pretty sure it was Cog they were headlining and Floating Me was middle band and Sleep Parade from Melbourne was the first band. I remember the gig really well because a friend of mine was doing lighting that night for Jive and she asked me, what would I like? So I told her, do whatever you want at the back. This is what I always tell lighting techs. Do whatever you want at the back of the stage and at the front, just put a whitewash. Just enough to light them up. No one wants to see pink faces and blue faces, but behind with gels and that, that's fantastic. But just put a whitewash in the front. So this might have been one of only a few times where I actually had really good lighting at Jive. <laughs> Up here. I'm thinking about heading down a little bit just to get out of the wind. Looks like there's a cave back here, but there's no way into it. Like, check this out. There's a cave through there, and the only entrance point that I can see is at the top of this thing. Where's my finger? Here's my finger. Up there. And I reckon if I come back out here and go back up this way, I could probably climb around this top rock and come back down and get through that opening into that cave. Back on top again. So I reckon over here there's going to be somewhat of an access point down. And if my bear grillsing is working for me, this should be the opening to that cave. There it is. So I reckon if I pass my skateboard and my bag through that gap and then I climb in after it, should be good to go. It's a little sketchy. But I reckon I'm in. I reckon I can park myself right here. It's out of the wind. Got a little backrest. Definitely out of the wind. That's what I was hoping for. So get a good view of the sun. We can watch my next sets. Scooter Brad, let's have a look at your piece. Before we even begin, one has to wonder, and I'm talking to you, Scooter Brad, why you changed the title of your video. Initially, it was called Skater Mad at Monster Skate Park Fire, and then in brackets, Crazy Mega Ramp Fail. You swapped it to Famous Skate Park Burns Down. One can only speculate, but my suggestion is that you received too much negativity on what you suggested about me in that video that you wanted to draw any new attention to other parts of the video. One must also note the interesting Photoshop creation you did for your thumbnail. And I say creation because you Photoshopped my face to look angry, when in actual fact I wasn't angry. Here's what you've done. Here's the original. You've done a little tweak on my eyes and you made my face red. You've made me look angry when I actually wasn't angry. And this also plays into the fact that the pinned comment that you wrote where you told everyone to go and rip me a new one, you changed that. We'll dig into that a little bit deeper. Let's get cozy and roll his video. 
I just stumbled over this gem of a clip. A gem of a clip. Who made this again? I'm just gonna... Gives a Minute. This was posted by a YouTube channel with just over 1,000 subscribers. It's called Gives a Minute, and it's a dumb... Ska a, a very ignorant skateboarder. I'm gonna just stop you right there because you've labeled me as dumb and ignorant right from the onset of your video. You've done this to label me as the bad guy before any of your viewers have even had the chance to watch the video and make up their own decision. This is textbook journalism. It's creating something from nothing. You're manipulating a story to fulfill your own end need. Again, skateboarders making another stupid, idiotic appearance in the world of action sports. Roll it. It's 48. I'm gonna stop you again, man, because you've just made this into a skate versus scooter argument. Why you would choose to do that? It's 2017, man. Wake up. This narrow-minded bigotry between action sports, none of the major athletes share this view that you have. Wake up, dude. 48 past four, probably shouldn't be crossing this line. Uh, where are we? We are at Monster Skate Park. We were trying to have a skate here on our Friday vert session at this ramp. Apparently there's been an epic fire inside the park. The vert ramp's untouched, you can see that there. But inside this building apparently, that was all on fire today. It's unfortunate because we've got Dan meeting me here and we have Paul Baker coming from um, Central Coast. Dan's just turned up. Hey Dan. There'll be no skating. How about that? Of all the days that we come down for a session, this is affecting a lot of skateboarders. I'm not happy on a Friday afternoon. I've only skated vert three times in the last 10 years or something. The guy hasn't skated in 10 years consistently go home and ask these kids if they know okay so by your logic there uh scooter brad unless you skate consistently you're not welcome at the skate park you are aware that there are many many reasons why people might not be able to skate consistently and ask these kids if they know anything about hey kids do you know anything about what went on here no not saying no um, you're, you're not saying that sounds like he knows do you know if there'll be a skate at all tonight in this place on the vert ramp not the inside Maybe in the car park over there. Is it going to be a skate today? Uh, no, dumbass. Okay, notice if you will, the fire started at 2 p.m. Fire is put it out by 3 p.m. The timestamp on my daily vlog was close to 5 p.m. Also notice that the vert ramp was untouched. The fire was inside the premise at the far end. The shop wasn't touched. The vert ramp wasn't touched. The entrance to the, to the whole thing wasn't touched. Notice also that I only asked about a vert session, but anyway. The place is on fire? You retard. All right, all right, all right, all right. I gotta stop you right there, dude. I really shouldn't even bother with this any further because with that one comment, you've just showed your entire audience and my audience what kind of a person you are. You labeled me a retard, which we all know is the shortened form of mental retard or retardation. Intellectual disability, it's not a laughing matter. It affects 3% of this population of this country in ways that you and I will never have to worry about. For you to flippantly use that term the way you have and in a sense encouraging your viewers to do the same, it just shows the lack of maturity, professionalism, and tolerance that you have as a person. And I really hope for your sake, man, you can correct this insidious behavior before it morphs into something more sinister. You're hearing the bad news from everybody, there'll be no skateboarding. What are you filming about, man? I'm vlogging, man. How you going? This is my favorite part. Vlogging You're on right? my phone? Yeah, yeah man. That's fucking sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Got it! <laughs> I sense a little bit of animosity there, but I'm gonna choose to ignore it. Jess Boland roasts his ass. Oh my God. If the fire wasn't just on the skate park, it's now on this dude's head. Fuck off. You must be. Okay, I wouldn't really call that a roasting. She's upset to start with. The, the fire had happened and, and she was cut and she was very upset. She didn't like me vlogging on an iPhone. The iPhone's a great tool for vlogging. 7 Plus with 4K 30 frames a second. I've been using it for six months for my daily vlog. It's completely fine. I don't consider that a roasting. I consider that someone being a little bit emotional and letting off some steam at the closest target, me. You must be a pro vlogger. <laughs> Uh, 900 and not enough. Oh! It's so typical how this skateboarder has no respect for the people that run the park. Probably because they're scooter riders. There's Owen Carter. All right. This, this is where the meat of your story comes together. You suggest that I have no respect for the scooter crew 
that work and scoot at Monster. I had no idea who these people were. Why should I know who they are? I've just told you already that I haven't skated consistently for 10 years. The last time I skated that park was the week before. Before that, there was a 10 year gap. So why should I know who these people are? I approach these people just like anyone else would approach any other person. Just like the, the news crew that approached me that asked me the exact same question. Channel 9 and Channel 7 asked me the same question. You made this into a disrespectful thing like I had no respect for these scooter kids. That's absolutely incorrect. The part that you cut out was me having a small joke with the guy who served me the week before about the hole in the vert ramp. Everybody, there'll be no skateboarding. Fixed the hole in the vert ramp. Oh, did you? Yes, we did. Oh, that's good news. I was heaps worried about you coming in and asking about that hole. <laughs> and now there's another one. I complained last week about the hole. And yeah. Is the hole the, maybe the, the fire started in the hole? <laughs> what are you filming about, man? I'm vlogging, man. I noticed the tension was there and the way Owen kind of like looked away and didn't want to be involved. So that's why I made the joke about the hole in the vert ramp. And then I backed away. There's nothing more to it, man. And you say this is typical of a skateboarder showing probably no respect to scooters, that, it's... Dude, it's idiotic. You're trying to fuel this fire that you have, this, this, this scoot versus skate thing, which you've got burning inside you that you wanna dig deeper in and make an issue out of it. You, you're trying to fuel that. You looked for the story when there wasn't one. These people could have been skaters, they could have been BMXs, they could have been inliners. I would have asked the same question. I'm doing my daily vlog. It's four minutes as it happens every day, four minutes after the one before. No edits, no cuts, no retakes. I didn't know who these people were. You're fueling this fire, dude. Scooter rider, Jess Bolin, scooter rider. Who is he giving animosity to? Them. They don't wanna talk about it. They are like family of not... Monster. Like they are the people that run and live Monster. They live and breathe Monster. And now that the place is on fire and some dickhead skateboarder it only cares about his- Dude, it wasn't, there's no animosity. Like you, you look at me, people can see that there's no animosity in, in my voice. There's no animosity in my tone. I'm making lighthearted of a hard situation. Yeah, you choose to deliver this to your viewers as animosity, skateboarders versus scooters. Dude, you trying to be like a current affair here or something? And some dickhead skateboarder, there you go again, man. Skateboarder versus scooters, fueling your own fire. His Friday night session on the vert ramp. Fuck off, go home, give up your career of skateboarding that doesn't exist. I have two months. Dude, I don't have a career of skateboarding. I'm not a professional skateboarder. I skateboard because it's fun, like I have done since I was 11. By your logic, because I don't skate consistently, I'm not welcome at a skate park. I'm sure that the owners of Monster would think slightly different about that. That's the end of his video. It kind of goes on a little bit more from there, but that's the end of his video. So I'm just gonna reposition myself. So with this video, Scooter Brad, sent haters to my channel, literally directed hate towards my channel. He pinned a comment to the top of the video, literally directing his viewers to rip me a new one. Now I believe everybody is entitled to free speech, to express their concerns and their comments in an open forum. And if it happens to be my YouTube channel, fine. But the second that that turns into foul mouth, bigotry, homophobic slurs, sledges against my age. As soon as this stuff starts occurring, I just ban the user and report their comment. Jaraz Jaraz, you look like a tard. Jaguar, you're a fucking dickhead, cunt. Phoenix Wilson, fuck you, mate. Honestly, have some respect for the pro scooter riders that basically live there, you gay ass faggot. Batman Gaming, gives a minute. You are a gay motherfucker. Tom K25, you are a faggot. The Deco Show, you dickhead. Those are pro scooter riders, Jess Bolin and Owen Carter, and they're not kids because you're acting like a kid dick ass. Marcus Avail, fuck yous, are like 60 years old, get a real life. Dylan McAvoy, can you not be a dickhead? At least you sounded like a dickhead. KC Memes, boy, your hairline is fucking bigger than the vert ramps. Get your mates to write it for you. Seg fucking hell. Come on, man. LFB Productions, fuck off, you disrespectful asshole, you faggot. Leave the owners and the scooter riders. Lock Dog, you're a fucking cunt disrespecting Owen Carter and Jess Boland. Affinity Scoot, you're gay. Hawksworld, gives a minute, fuck you, you disrespectful prick. Dominique Butler, kill yourself, you dumb cunt. Vanquish Gaming, you're a fucking dickhead. Do you not understand they did not want to talk to you, your shitty ass hairline? Lewis Allen, you're a fucking idiot, you know that? Montana Webb, your mother ass Downey in God's name. Why would you ask people around you that if the vert ramp is gonna be running, obviously not fucked hard, the building is on fire. If God asked me to sacrifice someone, it would be you and your iPhone vlog. Lewis Steed, 40 year old virgin. JVR Media Richardson, fuck you're so dumb, you dickhead fucking skater. Andrew Osborne, fucking asshole. Teddy Turner Wild, you fucking ignorant prick. Don't fucking say it's ironic. It's not dumbass cunt. David Drop, I've seen one video and I already hate you. Tyrion Knight, get fucked ugly prick. Slay Slacker 12, fuck you mate, have some respect. Kaya Singh, dickhead.
dickhead. HB Scoots, fuck you, dickhead. Weedo Vlogs, you're a gay cunt. Has a Scoots, you're a spastic. Den Tags, and dude, I'm a scooter rider, so yeah, as I said, fuck off. Tyler Patience, you know what you should do for your 1,000 subscriber special is kill yourself. Tragic Desire OG, biggest retard on the planet awarded to this guy. Recording your phone and disrespecting scooter riders. Quit YouTube, no one likes you. NRL Musket, you've got problems. You see this hate that Scooter Brad sent my way? None of this kind of stuff happened on my channel before he instructed his viewers to come to my channel and deliver that foul-mouthed filth. Scooter Brad made my phone number and my address public and I received non-stop phone calls. The first one coming through at about 4 in the morning, then at 4.30 in the morning, which I answered, came from Norway. Even though the caller disguised himself, he had a very Kiwi accent and he threatened me with we have your home address and he told me in no uncertain terms to stop making videos because I was disrespectful and I was not wanted on YouTube. I let him have his rant and I let him ramble on and on and on and on until eventually he just grew tired of it. I didn't say anything, I just listened to him go for it and then eventually he hung up. Then I received 30 more calls which I just let go straight through to the keeper. Sometimes they would leave a message. Ben brah, you're such a fucking rude cunt brah. You fucking got no respect anymore eh brah. I just fucking stop uploading and shit brah. You fucking sick cunt. <laughs> like brah, I heard you uploading a fucking new beard eh brah. You fucking dick pull a cunt. There's gonna be that poor little dick star. Fucking slap, mate. You fucking slap. Here's your cunt. You know, man, you be here to talk to you about the black Buddhas, man. The scooter bloody to all of us. You told all the black Buddhas. All of Australia know. All of Australia, the blacks you done. You know where you live. You told us to hit you, man. You're racist. I spit on you, Buddha. So shit. I let you answer the phone. Scooter blood, how it was Buddha. He is a true Buddha, he is a professional scooter. Africa hates you. South Africa hates you, and all of Australia will hate you too. You're a little hole. You blonde bitch boy, what the fuck are you? What you gonna say, man? You know, answer your phone. I also received multiple text messages and this genius piece of artwork. These calls went on for three full days and at night time I just left my phone in the other room, switched off, doesn't bother me. Wake up in the morning and see all the missed calls, it's fine. But what happened was they started involving the local community. Someone placed a order at Crust Pizza in Gaimir and had it sent to my house. The guy Ethan rocks up to my place with all this pizza and food. I've got to explain to him, sorry dude, I didn't order anything. It's these dicks on the internet that have my address and my phone number. I'm really sorry. Scooter Brad, you incited this and now your followers are affecting my local community in a financial manner. Dude, that's not cool, man. That is not cool. And that's why I went to the police and made a police report and gave them all the details, all the transcripts of all the missed calls. You start threatening my life and you start sending phony deliveries to my address using local community. That's just completely arm, man. That is totally arm. Now, as this has all been playing out, it's interesting to note that on Scooter Brad's channel, from his own view, He's actually receiving a fair amount of negativity. Fabs TK. Come on, man. The guy just approached the scooters like normal, man. And their attitude straight away was turn their back. It is an example of skater that doesn't have anything against you guys. And what's the deal about he's back to skate after 10 years? He just wants to roll like the others. You edited the video. The original shows the skater approaching other skaters exactly like the scooters. You're making yourself into a fool, man. WWE. Sorry, Scooter Brad. I love your channel. But if you actually watch his whole video, he was just asking them if they know what happened. No offense, but you over-exaggerated it so much much. Please don't hate on people who did pretty much nothing. Dr. Doofus Pants. You send endless hate and insult a man for naturally responding to a fire happening to a skate park. Ridiculous how people can be so heartless for him legit doing nothing. Spread positivity, not hate. Sean Christopher. You're angry at Gibbs a minute for being insensitive to people he didn't know. We're regulars at the skate park. Obviously he didn't know how dedicated they are to the place, yet you use the term retard with the full knowledge that those with mental disabilities are in no position to take care of themselves. I am sure you are better than that everyone is. Hesse Gessie. Gives a minute, aka Bannon, was just there to have a short skate session with his friend. He had no intentions whatsoever to disrespect the park, let alone the whole scooter community. For you to harass him and tell your fan base to rip him a new one, it's not only hum inhumane, but it is also against YouTube's terms, which is why I reported the video. Hopefully YouTube will catch on and take action against you. If you go back to his channel and watch the response videos he uploaded, you'll realize what you did is wrong and what a real adult looks like. Thanks, man. You're doing a great job at representing the scooter community, buddy. That was sarcastic. 
sarcasm for those who thought it was giving him props. Zambra gives a minute, clearly didn't understand who they were. He was there trying to enjoy his time with his friend and vlog and skate, just like everyone else. He obviously did not understand how they felt about the fire and is just trying to stay positive. You telling people to go and rip the dude a new one is not saying much about yourself. Dude. Right on. Connor K, that skater seems like a nice guy. Am I missing something here? Outline Wonder. Brad, you were so fucking mean to that skateboarder. What the fuck, dude? He just wanted to catch a session and he was curious about it. Jeez, calm down. So with all that hate that's going around, he then went, like I mentioned, he changed the title of the video and he changed that pinned comment. Now YouTube has some pretty clear guidelines on harassment, cyberbullying, and hate speech. Scooter Brad has breached a bunch of these guidelines, including revealing someone's personal information, deliberately posting content, in order to humiliate someone, making hurtful and negative comments videos about another person, and he's created content that promotes violence or hatred against an individual, in this case me. And as such, I've reported his channel. Now what does it mean to be in breach of YouTube community guidelines? Well for a creator like myself and Scooter Brad, you can be awarded one strike for each breach. Three strikes and your channel gets completely shut down, YouTube just erases your channel, it's like you never existed, you lose everything. I would suggest that Scooter Brad knows all this because you have to agree to these terms before you sign up to YouTube anyway. But his callous disregard for the consequences begs one to question. Scooter Brad came under fire a little while ago for a video he uploaded, a nine year old getting drunk at a skate park. How old are you? What have you been doing all day? <laughs> what have you been doing? Nothing. You've been doing nothing? I've been drinking beers. On beers? The, on the Cody's G. How many beers have you had? Under 7%. 18 boxes. 18! Eight. Oh my god. A drunk ass. The police allege that this video, by being uploaded to YouTube, victimized the child. Now I'm pretty certain that he would have already received a strike for that video. So Scooter Brad, you're potentially looking at two strikes on your channel, dude. Your response to, to me suggesting you breach these guidelines doesn't really help the situation. Removing that pinned comment and changing the title, it's luckily we got the screenshots, dude. Ultimately, Scooter Brad, I'll say this to you, you need to be accountable for your actions. You need to recognize the position and the platform that you come from and that you represent a community of people. You have to acknowledge that what you do directly affects how your community responds and how they react. You need to be accountable. So all in all, this last week for me on YouTube has been somewhat of a negative experience from a situation that didn't really warrant any negativity Excuse me. From a situation that didn't really warrant any negativity, Scooter Brad has twisted this into a story for his own gain, causing an undue amount of filth and hate. For someone in the community of YouTube creators to do that to another creator, I, I don't know your motives, dude. Like I said in a previous video, I've watched a lot of your stuff and I, I like what you do, man. I think you've got a good thing going. You just need to be mature about it, you need to be smart about it, you need to be logical about it, and you need to represent yourself and your community in a professional manner. Throughout this week I do have to thank my loyal givers. This week has been a testing time for me as well as my community of followers and I want to say thank you to all the givers who have shown their support and left a lovely comment and even the private messages I've had through other social networks. It's been really nice to first of all act to have acknowledgement that I haven't done anything wrong and second of all to have people stand up in my defense in this public forum and come to my my aid. So thank you everybody. This is a perfect time to throw to this. This is the second long neck of Cooper's Pale Ale that Dronus 4x4 sent me. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll just put a little up top there. Dronus, you've no idea how much this area and how much this week and how much even making this video has been taxing on me. Thank you so much for sending these beers to me. It also looks like that wind has died off. So I might go back up on top of the rock because that's where it's going to be the best view of the sunset. It's beautiful here now. That wind has really dropped off. That sun is dipping over the top. Suddenly I'm feeling a lot more chilled and relaxed. Could also be this beer. Thanks Dronus, 4x4. gotten a little bit cold here and I am now vlogging on the iPhone 7 Plus. I'm using the GH5 for a time-lapse. 
during the time lapse of this sunset, which is almost finished. But I am now gonna crack the Oettinger, second one from the six that Dronus 4x4 sent me. People like you should be saluted. Sending creators alcohol through the mail, it's a fantastic idea. This is a German Pilsner. So it is a little bit chilly here. I've got the hoodie on. Speaking of cold, old mates come across this Eagle Rock path. Old mates is an expression we use in Australia for anyone you don't know who happens to be pretty cool. He saw the uh, the pale ale and the empty Oatinger beer and he said, man, I've got a bottle of port and port warms you up. I'm gonna go back to my house, come back with the bottle. We can sit here and watch the end of this sunset with a lovely glass of port and it's tawny port, which is the one I love the most. So let's enjoy the tawny port with old mate. Oh, that's um, we're out of time. I'm always running out of time on my vlog. Hey, if you like that content, please do me a solid and subscribe here. Check out the previous vlog here and check out a random vlog here. And if you like doing the snappity snappity clickety clack, that's photography. You might get a kick out of my Lightroom 6 presets here. Does that mean 20 seconds?